Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend from the CTOadvisor.com. It's been a busy VMworld Monday, but that's kind of rhetorical, right, guys? It is. You know, yeah. like if you've never been to VMworld, it's hard to explain. It is a day full with IT knowledge, friends, community. It is a it's overwhelming, and it's back at San Francisco, which you know, been in San Francisco any time of the year is an experience. Yes. So I'm joined with Yolk Pisker, our co-host. Yolk, this is our first time co-hosting together. We, yep. You've done a couple of CTO doses today. And Eric Vogel, VP, I want to say like CEO of <laughs> HPE GreenLake. And we'll get into why we want to say that in a minute, but VP of HPE GreenLake, new business unit within HPE. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. So why I would want to say that, you know, you're the CEO of HPE GreenLake. Antonio Neri announced, you know, HPE, this ambitious plan to have everything as a service within the next couple of years. And we kind of joke, yeah, that's not a small task. Like, you know what, you'll, you, have a, you have plenty of time to go on your boat. I don't know if you have a boat, but, you know, you'll, you'll have time to buy a boat, go on a boat and just relax and all the minions can go, go and do and make this happen. First off, why help us with the scale? Why, why hold BU around GreenLake? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, what we found is GreenLake is its own unique challenge. Uh, we're taking a traditional company that's used to selling boxes and, and selling hardware and changing pretty much everything. The way we sell, the way we approach the market, the way we go to market, the way we drive awareness about what we're doing. So it's really changing the way clients perceive us, the way they interact with us, the way we need to get in front of them. So the whole experience, the customer experience uh, for GreenLake is very different than sort of the traditional uh, Green Lake model that, or the traditional sales model that we've had in the past. So we've recognized that we really need a a separate BU that's going to focus on that new customer experience, which is the whole as a service motion that Antonio talked about. And hence, we've got to think differently, and we have to set up a BU that thinks differently. All so right. I want I want to know that you know talk to us a little bit about the why of Green Lake. What's what's the idea behind doing everything as a service? What are the benefits for HP? What are the benefits for the customers? Yeah, I think one of the biggest influences and in, with influence of cloud and SaaS and the emergence of those technologies over the last three to four years is it's really changed the way our customers want to buy from us, uh, not just us, pretty much the market. Um, and it's it's not just on the consumer side with things like Uber, or those types of services, but you know you look at all the SaaS platforms, the plural sites, the infrastructure SaaS platforms, what ServiceNow, Salesforce. And that has spilled over even into traditional infrastructure companies. So we find ourselves, customers asking us, hey, we want to buy that way. We want to consume that way. We expect you to behave that way. So that's really what's driving it is the market is really asking for that. This is no longer a product out sales motion, but rather this is customer in because this is what the customers are asking. Microsoft learned this, right? When they, they made the switch, so you can't buy a box software anymore from Microsoft. Adobe went through this. Um, and now you know, our customers are demanding it. So really, if we want to provide the experience that our customers are looking for, we too have to move down that path and start to offer pretty much everything as a service because there are customers today that that's, that's the only way they're going to buy from us. That's the only way they want to consume our products is as a service. So we really don't have a choice. The market is forcing us there. The customers are, are moving us in that direction. So for us, uh, we're finding greater customer loyalty. Uh, customers are, are getting a better experience. We think it makes us more competitive in the marketplace. And more importantly, it gives us a longer term relationship with the customer. You know, we're traditionally in, we sell the box and we, and we go and wait until we have to refresh. Now this is an ongoing customer success. We have to continuously be there with our customers and continuously drive that uh, on an ongoing basis, continuing to add value for our clients. So it's, it's definitely a diff different sales motion, different experience, but it's really the customers that are pushing us. So we had the marketing team on earlier talking through the communications to customers. Uh, how do you kind of talk to the solution? And, but some of the things that I thought on as, as kind of follow on to that conversation, you know, kind of feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. OEM solutions and providing OEM solutions is one thing as a service. I, I can work that through. But today, Enterprise IT, and 
enterprise IT vendors are all about business outcomes mm -hmm. versus the speeds and feeds of technology as, as before. And part of business outcomes or getting to those outcomes are services. So help me wrap my head around providing hardware as a service, which I get, but services that focus on business outcomes as a service wrapped into a con complete solution I kind of there's a bit of inception there. Yeah, this is. I think honestly, this is this is part of our big challenge. And you look at our cultural challenge and our people challenge. Is how do we get our own people kind of thinking that way? Because we're used to addressing the problem with a product um, and and going out there with the product and saying, hey, we can reduce your costs or improve your performance or improve your uptime with this device. Um, now we are saying, look, we're we're going to take the device and we're going to add a set of services and capabilities on top of that, and we're really going after that outcome, that business challenge. Um, if you look at why customers are buying. SaaS or how they buy SaaS today uh, or anything as a service, it really starts with the outcome and it starts with the problem that we're trying to solve uh, for the customer. And I think that's a big part of the, the change in sort of how we're approaching that is we're now starting with the customer and what the problem is that we're trying to solve and then starting to work backwards. If you look at the original GreenLake and kind of how we got that started, the problem was customers said, we don't have the big CapEx dollars. Our budgets are being cut. Uh, we like cloud because we can just buy what we need when we need it. And if we need more, we pay more. If we need less, we pay less. So we were addressing that CapEx challenge uh, with GreenLake Flex Capacity. So it, it was kind of the, the first step. Now we're moving even deeper in that. Clients are saying, hey, how do we hand it, handle um, really looking at cost analytics on top of this platform? So we've got the infrastructure, we've got software. We want to be able to allocate those costs by business process back to business units so they can see what they're spending. So we have better accountability, better control, better governance uh, around what we're spending for these services. So it's really, you know, when we start to lead with this kind of service approach and start to, to address the outcome, we're really starting with the business problem and then building it backwards and saying, what do we have to provide? And I always like to say that the infrastructure question is the last question we're asking, where we used to ask that first, what, what's the right box? What's right. the right platform? Now we're saying, what's the business problem? What types of solutions and services do we need to provide to meet that challenge? And then what's the underlying infrastructure that has to support that? So we're really starting now to go the other way, again, customer in, where the infrastructure questions the last one we're asking so one of the things that i've been asking on the ground is some of these new business challenges that's coming up as a re as a result of new technologies mm -hmm. so for example sap hana i i can now at ask bigger questions and more complex questions than i could before mm -hmm. what customers are experiencing is that now that they can ask bigger questions they're realizing they're they there's a whole another layer of questions that they yep. have to ask that requires more data, more processing. So the investment that they made a year, year and a half in hardware for HANA, you know what, already obsolete. How does Greenly kind of add flexibility to those environments that I just need the, the latest and greatest hardware because that hardware helps me to answer the hard business questions? Yeah, and I think there's two pieces to that. So, so GreenLake at an infrastructure layer, a platform layer, provides that growth and that easy addition, capacity addition and flexibility. Uh, what we're doing in that is we're providing uh, kind of a redundant or an excess capacity for our clients. So if they're using SAP, we kind of have a target for what they're using, but we also give them a buffer. You know, in manufacturing terms, we call it safety stock. Uh, we give them a buffer that sits on the floor, ready to go. All they have to do is turn it on. And they don't pay for it until they turn it on. So until that core becomes active or they start to use something on that disk, they don't really pay for it. So it gives them that buffer. So as they begin to drive that next iteration of questions, as they start to take on more and more data, and by the way, that's increasing exponentially, um, we, we have that capacity on the floor so we can quickly add it. And while we're doing that, we're constantly monitoring that usage so we know when to make the next order, the reorder point, if you want to, again, back to manufacturing terms, to get that next bit of capacity. And we manage that for them. So we make it a, a very seamless uh, process for them so they're, they're never behind or never out of capacity. They always have it ready to turn on when they need it and when they pay for it when they when they turn it on. The other side of that is as part of sort of the next generation of GreenLake and where we're headed is we can provide SAP as a service where now we're providing the infrastructure with the application with the middleware fully monitored and managed 
and they're just buying it and consuming it as a service in entirety. And that's that's quite a bit different where we just provide the infrastructure, but they still have to do all the other pieces. Now we're saying, look, we can we can bundle that all up as part of our GreenLake workload solution and provide SAP as a service. So they're they're not forced to do that chase, but rather as they, they can just continue to consume and use it um, as as you know, if it was a SaaS. But the nice thing is it all sits in their data center. It's all on-prem. Uh, we solved the data gravity issue because that data doesn't have to move out to a public cloud or somewhere else. It can stay on-prem. Uh, so we don't have to deal with that. And we can give them that, that SAP as a service capability, fully managed, all the capacity managed in a consumption-based, cloud-like economic model, all within their data center. So I think we're addressing that twofold. One, we can take care of the infrastructure if that's what the clients are looking for, but we can manage all the way through the SAP stack as well. So that, that makes sense, you know, from an operator perspective, it, it's kind of like you get your building blocks, you can, you know, put them together, create the applications you need. I'm, I'm curious, the other side of this same coin, right, the developers in organizations, I mean, they use cloud services as POCs, they experiment, they start to use it, and then, you know, as part of their development workflow, they pick and choose the right services. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how, how GreenLake fits into that to kind of support that developer workflow. Yeah, so I think the traditional Green Lake, um, it wasn't really built for developers, right? To be honest with you, we really that was really designed for IT, right? To support IT needs. Um, and if you contrast that with what AWS did, AWS started as a developer platform and really targeted developers. If you look at how it's built and organized, and if you're a developer, that's home for you. Uh, so what we're doing with Green Lake as part of sort of the next generation is we're building those services that developers are demanding on top of Green Lake. And if you think about it, we, we can we have the flex capacity component. So now we can add VM as a service, for example, where we can provide up through the hypervisor and provide the virtual machine kind of in a VM vending type of model. So an EC2 on-prem type of capability, all charged in a consumption uh, cloud-like economic model. So they just pay for the VMs when they turn them on and they can turn them off. And we're also building out what we call GreenLake Central, which is our, our, our central portal. And this is the, the access point where you can come in and access this environment, where you can see how it's performing. You can request these environments, you can spin them up and spin them down and manage the life cycle of that, that virtual machine uh, as if you were doing it natively in Azure or doing it in Google Cloud. Um, the other thing we're doing is offering a container as a service. So along the same lines, what if you just want a container solution uh, looking to provide container as a service capability? And we can do that because we have the infrastructure capability with uh, GreenLake Flex Capacity. So all we're doing now is adding another component on top and beginning to add value add services on top of Flex Capacity to provide a full stack solution. So let's talk a little bit more, let's kind of delve into this Flex Capacity part of the conversation. I understand if I have stuff on the floor and I need to expand out, at some point I run out of that physical capacity. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges to agility in the enterprise is not just procurement, which GreenLake helps solve the procurement challenge. It is just managing the data center. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't tell you how many times I got in the HCI solution that's supposed to speed up time to value just to uh, see that, oh, I don't have the rails for the solution. I now have to order the rails, or someone stole my spot in the data center <laughs> right. and I have to get the, a new spot built out for the landing zone. Mm -hmm. I just want to buy VMs. Right. How does GreenLake get me to the point where I'm just buying VMs? Yeah, so within the data center, uh, you know, I think some of those challenges will still remain. Right. right? So when we, when we provide the capacity, full capacity management, we take over that headache. So we, you don't run out. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, because we can pre-provision and build it out in our factory and deliver it pre-configured, pre uh, it alleviates a lot of those, oh, I didn't have the cables, or they're not long enough, or wrong power supplies. How many times have we seen that? Um, you know, that's taken care of within GreenLake, and we can quickly get that, get that rack and roll it in. Now, if you don't have space to put it, that's another challenge. Um, some of the things we're doing to sort of augment that is, you know, we're looking at, how about if we put capacity in a colo facility? How about if we build out an Equinix data center, Rackspace data center, we have that capacity where we hold it there, we make that available to customers. Uh, so if you do start to run out, let's say all of a sudden you have a huge seasonal bump, uh, back to school campaign takes off more than you thought or an application needs to scale, where 
we're not going to have the month to get everything built and shipped in and loaded and put into your data center. But what if we can burst you to a colo facility as an interim solution? So giving you real-time capacity availability in a colo that then can swing back to your on-prem solution when it's ready. So those are the things we're looking at to address a lot of those problems. We want to give that, from an experience perspective, we're trying to drive you know, a truly uh, available capacity experience where you don't run out of capacity. Just as no different if you were at Azure. We have to do that by augmenting what goes in the data center with something that sits outside of the data center and bringing that together in a seamless experience. You know, you'll, you know it would be really cool if they could take something like a VCF, put it on GreenLink, and then put that in Equinix. Oh, yeah. That would, yes. be, that would be cool. That's a good rub, my, rub my bottom right there. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. You know, it's interesting you mentioned uh, uh, Equinix because we, we have a lot of clients who want to do things like dev test in public cloud, but they want to run production in private. Right. And of course, Azure Azure Stack is a great solution for that as long as the Azure Stack can scale to the right uh, right size. So we have we're looking at Equinix specifically for that type of solution because now we just have to cross the hallway where we're running in the public cloud side of Equinix for Azure. And then the production just swings across the hallway uh, to Azure Stack, which is running a colo for our, for our clients in a fully managed environment. So it gives them the ability, that flexibility, to do dev test here and bring it inside to do production, all within the same four walls of an Equinix data center. Um, and give them that, that ability to burst out and bring it back without having to send data uh, across a, a, a long network path. Now we just literally cross the hallway. That's a good edge computing use case. Right it there. is a good, yeah, it is. So Eric, you're you're a pro prolific creator of content. Where can people find like your musings online? Yeah, I think the best best part to start is just look me up on LinkedIn. So it's Eric with a K Vogel, um, and connect with me on LinkedIn. I do have a lot of blog posts, a lot of information there, a lot of these recordings that I do. Everything is available there, um, as well as pointers to all of our HPE internal resources uh, that clients may want to look at and read about. Um, as we begin to build out our GreenLake Central, that central portal, uh, we're going to make everything available within our marketplace part of that portal. Uh, as you know, people who buy SaaS now, they want to learn about it on their own. Right. Uh, they don't want salesmen showing up with PowerPoint decks. They want to go learn about it, try it out, test it. Um, all of those demos, try and buys, all of that will be available within our portal uh, coming out later this month, and they'll be able to go access a lot of that material there as well, including community groups, wikis, white papers, all of that. Uh, but short term, look me up on LinkedIn. It's probably the best place to find me. And you can find me in this conversation on LinkedIn, uh, as well as, yo, you're a pretty prolific LinkedIn, LinkedIner yourself. Yes, I am. Yep. And your Twitter? Twitter, at yeah. And you can find me on Twitter, at CTO Advisor. Join the conversation. We'll have this video on LinkedIn, on YouTube. This is the new reality as a service is becoming a, a critical part of enterprise IT, whether you're developing, whether you're consuming it from public cloud providers, providers such as H, HPE or, or their competitors. We love to hear about how you're consuming enterprise IT services moving in the future. Join the conversation online. Until the next CTO Dose, find us on the web. <laughs>